Hello everyone, my name is Keith Bailey, coming at you with picks and predictions for NFL. We have 14, everyone's on the same playing field now. Everyone's played 12 games, there are no mistakes. It is a sprint to the finish. I have my hood up because the house is freezing right now. Our furnace broke. So, it's probably 50 degrees in this house right now. So, <laughs> that's why I'm wearing layers. Um, I'm taking a couple of risks this week. Um, I a lot of close games, but we'll see how it play, uh, pans out. It starts on Thursday night, and what a game do we have on Thursday night. We have the Raiders at the Chiefs. I want to pick the Raiders, but I'm picking the Chiefs to go for the sweep. The Oakland Raiders, as solid as they've been this year, They've been playing with fire in most of their wins. Uh, most of their wins have come in the final minute or the final seconds of the game. Or they were down 18 points like the Bills and they had to come back in the second half. I mean, Oakland can't just like thoroughly stomp someone it seems. Um, Kansas City, on the other hand, since they're lost at home against the Bucks, they've won two straight road games. Uh, this isn't a team that loses at home very often, so to see them, I don't think it would, uh, like them losing two in a row at home would happen. The Chiefs are just a very good football team right now, and I think with the way the Chiefs beat the Raiders the last time they played, I just think they know how to beat Oakland. So, we'll say Kansas City 27, Oakland 24, and probably the most meaningful game between these two teams in a very long time. Next up, we got the Steelers at the Bills. I'm going to pick the Steelers in this one only because they're rolling on offense. They're starting to figure it out. <sighs> the Bills, you had a feeling this was going to happen to them. It usually does. They'll start solid, they'll be solid for a while, and then they'll just, just fade away. Just slowly fade away. They're playing a superior team in the Steelers. A uh, Steelers team that's on the road. It's healthy, and the defense has stepped up. And I think the Steelers will end up taking this game 31-20 to over the Bills. Uh, the Bills will be able to run the ball uh, kind of effectively. The Steelers have nice linebackers, but the Bills' pass defense I don't think will be is, solid, is decent, but I don't think it's going to be able to keep up with what Pittsburgh's got. Next up, we got the Denver Broncos at the Tennessee Titans. This game is huge for Tennessee because I personally feel that if Tennessee steals one of these two games against the Broncos or Chiefs, then we have a 65% chance of winning the division. If we don't win these two games, if we go 0-2 in our next two games, we have a 0% chance of winning the division. I'm calling that now. Zero percent chance. If Tennessee steals one of these games, 65. And that these are just rolling numbers off the top of my head. Um, Tennessee would be seven and six with a game that they can afford to lose next week, considering how bad the South is. And then they get to finish with Jacksonville and Houston. So that uh, if they steal one of these two games, then they're just their record spells nine and seven right out for you, which after three and thirteen and two and fourteen, I would take nine and seven in a heartbeat. I would take eight and eight in a heartbeat. Hell, I would take six and ten in a heartbeat. But Tennessee will win one or two more games this year. I think. I don't think they'll make the playoffs. The Colts seem to have figured it out a little bit, and I think it's the Colts that are going to win the South, not the Titans, unfortunately. Um, however, if Tennessee does win this game, I think Tennessee wins the division. If they win this game, I think they win the division. Um, obviously, a lot of it depends on what the Colts and Texans do, respectively. Um, but I think Denver comes away with the win. Uh, just the pass defense on Tennessee is not good. And I think the Broncos, no matter what quarterback plays, I think Denver wins at 24-17. to 17. Um, This would be another close one. They usually are. Denver doesn't like to blow anyone out. 
Um, the defense will force a turnover or two for Mariota. He's due for a couple. But this is a good chance for Tennessee to see how they stack up against one of the best defenses in the NFL. So that'll be fun. Next up, we got the Redskins at the Eagles. Washington, solid, solid season. They're slipping away slowly. I think the Eagles get back on the winning track here at home. This is a team that doesn't necessarily lose at home. Oh, excuse me. <clears throat> I think Philadelphia takes it. Um, 23-20 to 20 over Washington. I mean... Redskins have kind of, I mean, Kirk Cousins is a solid quarterback. The thing that, that hurts the Redskins right now is their defense a little bit. Um, and their offensive line, because let's face it, against the Cardinals, Arizona literally ran the same play back-to-back, -back, and they couldn't cover the edge rusher, um, not the edge rusher, the blitzer on the uh, right hand, on the left-hand side of the line. They couldn't pick him up both times. Kirk Cousins had no time to throw. Um, Philadelphia's got a solid defense, and I think the Eagles will take this game. Next up, we got the Cardinals at the Dolphins. The Dolphins were exposed last week as complete pretenders because the way the Ravens manhandled them, it was disgusting. I mean, completely flat performance. Maybe it was arbitrary, but all we know is that the Ravens had one of the best defenses in the had the best defense in the NFL going into this. The Cardinals defense is not as good, but you might as well say the Cardinals defense is as good as the Ravens defense. And if this is how Miami plays against a top notch defense, I think the Cardinals are going to revive their brief their slim playoff hopes here with by traveling to Miami and giving them another home loss. Because Miami I believe is Four and one or five and one at home this year. So I think the Arizona Cardinals go to Miami and get the win by a score of thirty to sixteen. Next up, we got the Chargers at the Panthers. Um, this is a game being played between two of the better worst teams in the league. Um, teams with losing records, that is. I believe. This cross-country trip gets to San Diego. I think the, Car the Carolina Panthers win the game. Yes, even after that crazy debacle where they scored seven points against the Seahawks, which I'll get to the Seattle Seahawks in a minute, by the way. But I think the Panthers end up taking this game by a score of 24 to 21. San Diego loses another close one game because it's all that's the only way they can lose. Bengals at Browns. I flirted with picking Cleveland here. I'm still flirting with the possibility of picking Cleveland here. But I can't. I would have if the Bengals looked worse against the Eagles seeing what they did. But with the way the Bengals thoroughly beat the Eagles last week, I just can't. I mean, the Bengals are gonna make they're not gonna make the playoffs. But I think Cleveland I think Cleveland will go 0 16 this year. That's how bad this Browns team is. So I believe that the Cincinnati Bengals will go into Cleveland and take the win 31 to 17 over Cleveland. Next up we got the Bears at the Lions. I don't know. Call me crazy. This has trap game written all over it for Detroit. The normal Detroit Lions would follow up a great win at the Saints with a home dud against the team they're supposed to beat that they already lost to this year anyways. The Bears have beaten the Detroit Lions this year. If you look at the Lions, yes, they're 8-4, but their four losses have been head scratchers. I mean, they lost to the Titans. They lost to the Bears. They lost to the Packers, which I guess isn't much of a head scratch back when Green Bay was healthy. And then they lost to the Texans. Makes you go, huh, doesn't it? The Lions should win this game. They should have their second straight winning season, or no, their second winning season in three seasons with this game. I'm going to pick the Lions to win, but not by much. 20 to 19. 
I think the Lions win this game. I think the Bears put up a fight. The Bears have been very competitive recently. They took Tennessee all the way to the end of the game. They thoroughly beat the 49ers. And maybe there is something in that the system that their third string quarterback is playing and I keep forgetting his name. Um yeah, whatever whatever his name is. So who knows? But I think the Lions do eat out away. Next up we got a Texans at Colts. Houston has dropped three in a uh, three in a row. The Colts have won four of their last five, I believe. I think it needed it was two and five earlier this year. Um I might be wrong, uh, but I do believe that the Colts are bad. I mean, either it was that or that the Jets are just really that bad. But the Indianapolis Colts are a solid football team. So you know, this is like the sixth time I've yawned in this video. I'm tired. It's midnight. The Colts, I believe, will take this win, 30 to 20 over Houston. Um, the Texans were very lucky to beat the Colts last time. I believe that was like the prime of Brock Osweiler's career. <laughs> Seriously. And the Indianapolis Colts will get the 7 and 6. And let me put it in perspective for you. After this game against the Texans, the Colts have to travel, I believe, to play the Vikings. If I am right, which... Colts, yes, no, yes, yep, at the Vikings next week. Indy plays two winnable games, home against the Texans, at Minnesota. My Titans play two tough games, home against the Broncos at Kansas City. As solid as Tennessee has been this year and as improved as Tennessee has been this year, they can be out of the AFC South race, race in two weeks. Indy swept them. No, uh, they already have the tiebreaker over us. So if the Colts managed to get to eight and six and win their next two games, and the Titans were to get to six and eight and lose their next two games, which I do project, they do lose their next two games. Tennessee's out. There's nothing they can do about it. The only thing they could do at that point is play spoiler and help the Colts get in by beating Houston in Week 17. So. I mean, we'll see what happens. That's why they played the games, but Indianapolis has turned the corner a little bit here. Next up, and this is an upset. I'm picking this. We got Vikings at Jaguars. I am picking the Jacksonville Jaguars to win. This is why. The Jaguars have the second best pass defense in the NFL. Let that sink in for a second. And it's decent. this isn't garbage time crap, okay? Because the Jaguars actually, if you look at it, they've been in every single game this year except for that Thursday nighter when they were exposed on national television. Let me read these off. Jaguars schedule. Because that game was nationally televised. Everyone saw the Jaguars get down twenty seven to nothing against the Titans. So, when you think about it that way, everyone's like, oh wow, the Jags are bad. But, take a deeper look into their games. They lost to the Packers, 27-23. to That game could have ended with a Jaguars win. And then, yes, they got blown out at San Diego, 38-14. to And then, listen... They lost against the Ravens 19-17 to on a game-winning field goal. And then they won their next two. They beat the Colts. They beat the Bears. And then they went on to lose to the Raiders 33-16. to And then, listen to this. They lost to Tennessee on that Thursday night football game 36-22. to Yes, we get that. But they have lost... Five of their last six games by a touchdown or less. They lost at Kansas City 19 to 14. They gave the Chiefs a rough time. They lost to the Texans 24 to 21. They gave the Texans a hard time. They lost to the Lions 26 to 19. They gave the Lions a hard time. 
They gave the Bills the hard, a hard time, 28-21. to 21. And they even gave the Broncos a hard time. Lost 20-10. to 10. In a game where the defense really won it for Denver. Because Jacksonville's offense is just so bad. And I know the Vikings have a good defense too, but they lost one of their best linebackers just recently. And the Vikings don't really have that good, nearly as good of an offense. And the Jaguars have one of the best pass defenses in the NFL. And they can stop the run if they know you're going to run it. So this is going to be a very low scoring football game. None of these offenses are going to be able to do anything against these defenses because both of these offenses stink. And both of these defenses are very good. So I think the Jaguars win 13-7 to over the Vikings. That is my prediction. Next up, we got the Jets at the Niners. I'm going to go with the Jets here only because... The Niners are really bad. And the Jets, as bad as the Jets are, and as bad as they looked against the Colts, I think Todd Bowles will have this team prepared for this game against the 49ers. Because the 49ers stink, okay? There's no way. There's no way around that. No matter who's quarterbacking the Jets, they easily have the talent to wipe the floor with the 49ers. So I think the Jets end up taking that game by a score of 19 to 13. Saints at Buccaneers. I picked against Tampa, I think, every single game during the last couple games. I'm going to continue to do so um, this week. Saints at Buccaneers. And I have to give Jameis Winston credit. I mean, I know he's always going to be grouped in with Marcus Mariota. And Marcus is my boy, so anytime there's some kind of Jameis versus Marcus uh, debate, I have to chime in almost. I have to stick up for my boy. I have to um, show them. All right. I got into an argument with a uh, with someone on YouTube, and this this actually was. I don't know if it's still up. I'm gonna look. Notification. But this was funny. He tried arguing me, and then every single. Um, Every single time he tried saying something, I just completely shot back something that that just shut him up. So bear with me while I look. All right, I found it. All right. So I got in an argue with someone. Here's the comments. Uh, give Mariota a Mike Evans and we'll see. Uh, this this is a um, response to it. The first comment in this thing was, Winston is better. Look no further than the last two weeks of play. And this was made um, uh, while the Bucks were 5-5 five and five and when the Titans were 5-6. and six. He said, Winston is better. Look no further than the last two weeks. And then the first comment is, Give Mariota Mike Evans and we'll see. And then someone else said, give them both another two years and they will both be in the top six to eight QBs, but I would have taken Mariota out of college and I would take him now. Someone else comes and comments and said, Mariota has had a better QBR over both of their careers. Mariota is great and getting better. And then original poster said, never said Marcus Mariota wasn't good, but stat lines aren't the end all be all of a QB's worth either. And then I I chime in and I say, and this is just me sticking up for him. I know both of these guys are better, but I believe Mariota's better, and I said this. Mariota is better. Look no further than the last eight weeks of play compared to year two. Twenty one touchdowns, three intercept three interceptions. Your argument is invalid. He said an original poster posted against mostly trash opponents. Winston is doing bigger things. And I said, trash opponents or not, a 21 touchdown to three interception stat line is almost unheard of over an eight-game span. And last I checked, the Raiders, Dolphins, and the Chargers, or the Packers, Dolphins, and Chargers aren't trash. Winston has wins against the Camelots, Panthers, 49ers, and Bears. 
record. Uh, Chiefs and Seahawks wins are good, but Mariota has wins over Detroit and Miami, both 7-4. and four. Their schedules cancel each other out. Now, to be fair, this was made before the Buccaneers won um, their last two games of play, which is impressive. And then original poster comments, and he says, he also played the Texans, Jags, and Colts, teams not known for their amazing defenses, in reference to like, who the Titans play. The Titans play the Texans, Jags, and Colts. What happened when Mario tried the Vikings in actual defense? Exactly. Got wrecked. This was great. I was licking my lips over this because I was like, I told the original poster, like playing the Falcons and Saints defenses twice a year is a challenge. And you can't even talk about the Vikings because didn't a good defense like the Cardinals chew Jameis up and spit him out? Four interceptions. Get the f*** out of here. I literally told him that. And then he back, he started backing off saying Winston starts slow, sue him. Fact is, he beat two top Ds recently back to back. And and then that's pretty much where like where it ends. But um, sorry, I had to pour you through that. But anyways, as I was saying, both of these QBs are solid. Okay, I acknowledge that. But the fact of the matter is, if you look at Jameis' stat line, yes, he's been impressive. But last week, he completed like 50, or no, probably 60, 60 percent of his passes for one touchdown and one pick. Mariota would put that up, and the Titans would lose, because that's the way it is. The Buccaneers' defense has been playing very good football recently. Three turnover, they caused three turnovers by the Seahawks, and they returned a pick six against the Chargers. I mean, if you give, I mean, the defense is doing a lot of the work down there in Tampa Bay. And I got to credit Tampa Bay. But the fact of the matter is, the Seahawks, inconsistence, and the Chargers, yeah, the Chargers have a solid offense, but they're depleted. Now he's got the Saints, okay? The New Orleans Saints. The Saints have an offense that, yes, they struggled last week, but it makes you think that because they struggled last week, guess what? Now this defense, or now this offense is going to revive itself a little bit. Maybe that was an awakening. So, I think that the Saints win this game 35-28 to over Tampa. Because the Buccaneers defense, I don't think, is going to contain Drew Brees and the Saints. And I don't think Drew Brees can be contained two weeks in a row. So, I think the Saints will take this game. But I do have to say, if the Saints win this game... I will pick the Buccaneers in the next game because I believe these teams will split. Next up, Falcons at Rams. Are you kidding me? Atlanta wins this. Uh, 30 to 10. Um, easy. Uh, next up, we got Seahawks at Packers. By the way, Rams, keep losing. Please. I like their top five draft pick. Seahawks at Packers. Going with Green Bay here. I think the Packers, this is their statement a little bit. It's like, all right. We're back. I mean, we were on a like a five week vacation, but we're back. So, and the Seahawks have been inconsistent. I mean, are you kidding me? You score five points against the Bucks defense. You put up forty on the Panthers. This is why I don't trust the Seahawks because they'll look great one week and then they'll lose nine to three to the Rams, or they'll lose um, or they'll lose a game. 14-5 to five to the Buccaneers. It's the way the Seahawks play for some reason. I don't understand it. When they look terrible, they look terrible. So I think Green Bay gets the win here. 27-20 to 20 over Seattle. Next up, we got the Cowboys at the Giants. Dallas, I think, gets to 12 wins. Seals the division and seals one of the top two seeds. Yes. I think this would solidify Dallas with a bye. Uh, 27 to 19, we'll say, over the Giants. Now we got the Ravens and the Patriots, a game I'm looking forward to watch because every single time these two teams play, fireworks, man. So, this game will be a close one. They're a lot lower scoring than what they used to be, too. But I think the Patriots end up taking this game 23 to 22 over Baltimore. The Ravens are a good team. And the Ravens' defense can contain a Broncos-Patriots. So this game really honestly could go either way. 
but I have to go with New England for now. Those are my picks. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, and I will see you guys all next time.